What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday afternoon. I'm super excited for this team call. If you're wondering what that uh, personal development I was listening to was, that's David Goggins. He has an incredible book. I love listening to his stuff. Um, I found that I love listening to that stuff because I find myself in a very comfortable position in life with the business that we have and the lifestyle we have that I have to listen to people <laughs> that remind me to push myself outside of my comfort zone and that I can do hard things and the importance of doing that. So uh, that's why I had that up on there for you guys today. Uh, this is the first of like a 10 week series of calls that we are doing where we've changed the time to a little bit later so that our UK team can all hop on after the kiddos are in bed. And um, actually it was Hannah Antoniades that stemmed the question that I asked in the round table, uh, which is five star diamond elite coaches and above, um, like who got their start a little bit later, caught their momentum a little bit later and what happened with your business, what was the shift? And so our first speaker is Brittany. And like I said, we'll have 10 weeks worth of calls. Um, I put the call schedule inside of the Dynasty Strong team page. And then also make note that there is a coach sneak peek in March and in April, also pre-scheduled for Thursday nights at seven o'clock PM. So you can see that in the pinned post at the top. Uh, I don't want to go over announcements because you guys can get all of that from the National Wake Up Call and from the Coach Breaking News. Uh, but today, uh, I want to introduce our speaker, Brittany. Uh, her topic is going to be how belief plus the vital behavior saved my life. She is a five-star diamond coach, a two-time elite coach uh, leader, led an elite team two times. She was uh, NLC, which is the the new leader conference speaker in 2019. Actually, one of our coaches on here, Kiara Elise, had the opportunity to room with her at the new leader conference. She's been in Success Club for 60 months. And with that being said, Brittany, I'm gonna pass the time over to you and let you share your story and give us some awesome tips. Thank you guys so much. I am honestly so excited and honored to be speaking to you guys, um, especially about this topic, right? Because we're so consumed with like these coaches who just like hit the ground running on day one and like in a blink of an eye, they're a 15 star diamond coach. And we're like, what, what happened there? And I wanted to like share with you guys like my story and I think kind of my superpower as a coach is re resiliency and this is something that like I have been leaning into for the last few years um, every single season of my coaching career and I like to talk about the hard and I think once again a lot of coaches kind of fluff over that and they're like it's awesome it's amazing like you're just gonna be a 15 star diamond if you write it down enough um, and, and I want to share kind of like the real and the raw, definitely like Scotty says, that turning point of what really flipped the switch for me. Um, so you guys are all awesome leaders. You guys have this, like you're hopping on this call or you're watching the recording and you're obviously a coach who's like, yes, I'm here, but I know that I'm going to get somewhere. Like there's somewhere more that I want to be there. There's a bigger goal that I'm here to reach. There's a bigger impact that I want to have. And I'm hoping today um, or tonight for the UK coaches that this is something that can, can motivate you to take that next step. So um, I kind of want to share with you guys, my story is I started out as a self-proclaimed beach body hater. Um, I am a personal trainer um, and kinesiologist. So I grew up as a competitive figure skater, a competitive um, softball player. And what's hilarious is when I was 13, I did turbo jam. It was my favorite off ice training. It was something that I absolutely loved. Like Shalene Johnson, like I'm a hashtag lifer. She is my human and like started all of that when I was 13. But when I was in school uh, for to be a kinesiologist, that's when Beachbody Coaching came to Canada. And there was this surge of people sending me invites in my social media inboxes to like, be a coach, be a coach. And I was depressed overweight, had zero interest in this beach body coaching thing because I thought it was such a scam because I'm going to school to get my degree in this. So how dare you come around with this MLM? Side note, which is really funny. My mom did Mary Kay for 35 years. She was a top consultant in Canada. So like I am a network marketing baby, which is kind of hilarious that I was like, leave me alone, all you beach body coaches. 
And I, my upline coach, Virginia, who is in our dynasty downline, she sent me an invite and I kindly told her where to go, how to get there fast and to leave me alone. And I blocked her. And the funny thing was that was before Instagram was kind of the place to be. So I blocked her on Facebook, but I was silently creeping her on Instagram. I wasn't following her. I wasn't liking anything. At that time, there were no stories. So you couldn't see who was creeping your page. And I watched her day in and day out show up. She was a university, just like university student, just like me. Um, She was crazy busy. She was finishing up her degree. Literally, we were in the exact same spot. But while she was getting these awesome results, she looked happier, healthier. She was get going on these trips with Beachbody and it all just seemed like this cool life. I was emotionally eating, canceling plans with friends because I was at war with myself in the mirror. And finally, there was a girl that had signed up to become a coach in my kinesiology world. And she hit this like crazy rank that I, when it was Emerald, but I had no idea what it was. And she got recognized on social media to be this Emerald coach. And I was like, honey, if that girl can do it, I can, I can blow this out of the water. Right. So it took me six more months to sign up as a coach, of course. Um, so finally I saw the post from my coach that she beach body income disclaimer inserted here that she had paid off her credit card with her beach body income and as a broke university student I was this and working an unpaid internship to be a personal trainer and then of course having to pay for more certifications I was like okay I'm all in so I sent her a message and I was like you have no idea who I am but I'm going to sign up as a coach because if I don't sign up as a coach I'm going to quit and I don't want to quit so sign me up. Let's go. I'm, I'm the unicorn. I went from beach body hater to the unicorn that slides into your DMs. <laughs> and just like you guys, I had the opportunity to get into like a new coach training. And this was in 2016. And this beautiful blonde bombshell, Lindsay Matway came on the screen and was talking about vision. She was talking about how this business, you can use it as a vehicle to achieve any of the goals and dreams that you have. And it was just like this light went off. And I was just like, I've always loved motivational speeches. I've always loved, like, I wanted to be a a motivational speaker. That was like my big thing. Like I was a figure skater. I was going to go to the Olympics. I was going to speak on stage. And then I realized I wasn't going to the Olympics. Um, and I just, I wanted to do that. And I realized like, Hey, if somebody has kind of done the things I want to do in this life with this opportunity, there's no reason why I can't. And I was so grateful for that moment in time where Lindsay had shared, Hey, guess what? You can use this vehicle of coaching to achieve any of these goals that you have, whether it's $50 to go get a manicure or to pay off your credit card or hey you want to create a full life of freedom and create a six to seven figure income and I was like I'm all in let's do this so kind of like many of you um, you might relate to this is like you hit the ground running and you hit emerald because you signed up your mom and your boyfriend and so you just like were cruising along but once again you didn't see this like huge 15 star diamond thing happen and I just kind of felt stuck right? I just kind of felt stuck in my business. Um, I was doing the things, but I really wasn't treating it like a business. And at that time I was, I was doing the vital behaviors. I was kind of sort of getting results with the workout programs. I was not doing the nutrition plans because I was so terrified of nutrition programs and meal prepping. And I thought that was like going to be the worst thing ever. So I didn't do it, but I drank my Shakeology And I listened to podcasts and personal development every single day. And at this time, I was in an extremely toxic relationship. Um, It was like mentally, emotionally abusive, and I was just stuck. And there was this one day that there was this party that everybody, we were in a town of 100 people. So there's like more people will see this call than the amount of people that were like ever in the small town, right? And everybody in the small town was invited to this party except for me. And 
I later found out that it was a get Britney out of town party. We don't want her here anymore. We don't like her, like get rid of her. And from somebody who is struggling with all of this anxiety of trying to get people to like me, this depression, all of this like toxic relationship of you're not good enough, like you'll never succeed, all of this negativity. I sat down and I wrote four letters. I wrote a letter to my mom and my dad. I wrote a letter to my sister. I wrote a letter to my now ex-boyfriend and I wrote a letter to the guy who hosted the party. And I just said, what I was about to do had nothing to do with them, but I just had no place to be in this world anymore. So beside my house, there was this valley. And I realized if I like got in my Jeep and I drove fast enough and I hit that curve, I'd be able to roll my vehicle and I'd probably be able to do the trick. So I drove out that day with those four letters in my Jeep and I just sat there at the top of the valley and I was about to take my life. And all of a sudden I just got this nudge, not done with you yet. Trust me, I'm not done with you yet. And it was the first time in my life I felt that whisper, that whisper of like, I'm not done with you yet. And the visions that I had created from my life from that first like training call of like those visions of your life, I was just like, oh, those started flooding through my, like through my brain, through my like eyesight. All I saw was this incredible house I was going to have living on like this lake and having this happy family and creating this life. And I just had this nudge that I was meant for more. And I looked beside me in my passenger seat and on the letters was a lighter. I don't smoke. Nobody around me smokes. I've never had a lighter in my Jeep before. And all of a sudden there was a lighter there. And so I got out of my vehicle in that valley and I burned all four of those letters. I had that decision to make, okay, this is the moment that you take this seriously. You have this opportunity, like however God or the universe is going to use you right now, like go for it. And that was the same time that 80 day obsession was rolling around. This is when the test group photos were starting to come out. Emily Favre had this incredible transformation. Another coach who didn't get her start right off. She kind of like hummed and hawed a diamond for a bit and then took off because she took something serious. And because of those examples from 80 Day Obsession and the launch was coming, I said, this is gonna be the program that changes my life. This is going to be the year that I go all in. And I I waited until 80 Day Obsession came. I purchased my pack and January 15th, 2018 was day one of the rest of my life. And I always say there is two start dates to your business. The day you sign up and the day you decide to start treating it like a business. And that was January 15th, 2018, two years after I had signed up. And what I did in that 80 Day Obsession challenge was not only did I make a promise to myself to do the workouts every single day, drink the Shakeology and the performance line, listen to my personal development, do the meal plan for the first time ever, but I was actually going to fill out the business activity tracker every single day. It was the first time in my business that I actually was going to commit to sending out invites every single day day and checking off this thing that I would print out and fill out every once in a while, you know, and that was when I decided to draw the line in the sand. So within the first month of 80 day obsession, like, oh yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Feel, this is, this is a good program. Like things are changing. And it was at the start of phase three that I realized I had so much strength and self-love that I was able to leave that relationship be like 26 years old, move back in with my parents and kind of like restart everything. And it was because of that program and the ability with coaching to provide that freedom for me that I didn't have to tell a boss that I was like gonna quit. I was a full-time coach. So I was able to move wherever the heck I wanted to, which was such a blessing. And that's when I was able to move back to, um, back in with my parents. And then I moved back to Saskatchewan where I went to school. And that was honestly the turning point is when I 
look at what was the difference maker was that honestly that decision to make that day the rest of my life and make that day the start date to when I'm treating this like a business because we can treat it like a hobby we can treat this business as hey guess what I'm going to fill up this tracker and you know what today I'm not feeling so hot so I'm not going to send out an invite and I'm not going to show up and guess what if your tracker's empty so is your bank account and I remember hearing that quote and I was like oh my goodness and so what ended up happening was we got to work I decided to work with the willing I decided to show up there make sure that I was treating this like a business and that year um, we became a premier team we locked in two star back when it was like two star to be a premier well I guess it's still a premier team but it was NLC that you had to be two star to show up and then um, same thing, shared this story at, or at New Leader and decided to rebuild. Hey, guess what? We're going to continue to grow. And that next year in 2019 was when we went from, honestly, in January, I think I was an Emerald coach because I had so many coaches fall and quit that I had to rebuild my entire team to a five-star diamond team. And what I want to tell you of like, the second half of the resiliency in my story is we did five star five times for five months. So we hit five star, I b believe in May, and we did the whole three, four, five, four, three, five, four, five, three, four, five, and did our qualification for five whole months. And it was crazy. But what I realized in that next step of the of the business that next level was it was testing me hey and you guys are probably going to get these nudges too whether you're going from two star to five star five star to ten star whatever your goal is that you're going after right now you're probably going to feel that like hey Monday I wrote down my goal I'm going after it and then like 10 days later you just like nothing is going right and when you have those moments in your qualifications, when you have those moments in your business, honestly, it's the universe, God, whoever you believe in, testing you, how badly do you want it? And when I realized that in our five-star qualification of like, okay, how badly do you really want to be an elite coach? How badly do you really want to prove to yourself that you're a five-star diamond coach? And that's when I had to get out of my way and realize that I needed to start acting like a five-star diamond leader. I needed to stop allowing coaches to quit on themselves. I needed to do whatever I could to help inspire them to keep going and keep changing and shifting. So the craziest things that I can tell you guys is like, this business will take you anywhere you want to go. It can, I mean, Scotty is a perfect example. And there are so many beautiful examples on our entire dynasty downline of hey wherever you are there's somebody who looks just like you or somewhere someone similar to you that's achieved everything you wanted more and they don't have any more talent than you sorry scotty but they're just doing the things right they're doing the things scotty does the business activity tracker he did it every single day he's had those tests of how badly do you want this business and whatever goal that you're going towards, whatever that next step is, whether you are pushing for elite this year, two-time elite, three-time elite, premier, what, wherever you are in your business, all it is is how badly do you want it and how honest are you going to be with yourself of are you actually doing the things that that level deserves? And it's having those honest gut checks and it's hard and it sucks sometimes. And you're going to realize, oh yeah, my business activity tracker has been pretty blank lately. But as soon as you decide to like level up and dive into it, oh, your, your business will be unstoppable. It's just making that mindset and that mind shift of how you are going to, to switch in this business. And it's literally turning that light on. And every once in a while, that light's going to get a little dim. And it, it's going to get a little dark. And then you just have to refire yourself up, figure those things out, whether it's listening to those motivational um, speeches and stuff or a personal development or getting a new success partner. It's finding those things that are going to help fire you up. So that's honestly how I think I kind of had like chapters of my business that um, have tested me 
but also when I look at everything that's happened over the last five years, my five-year anniversary of being a coach was on Monday. And it's funny because I kind of tell myself I've been in this business for like two years um, <laughs> because I believe 2018 was my start date. And when I look at everything that has happened over the last five years, no matter how great things were or how crappy things were, I always was able to lean back on those vital behaviors. They didn't change, nothing shifted, whatever drama is happening in the business or the corporate world or whatever program you don't like, guess what? There's 700 other workouts you can do on Beach Body On Demand. Go choose a different one if you don't like the program you're doing, right? Go choose a different book if it's not serving you right now. But no matter what's happening, a global pandemic, inviting, being a proof that the product works and showing up every day, none of that's changed. And it hasn't changed and it won't. So lean into that every single day. So if you guys have like questions for me or anything, let me know. I love that, Brittany. This has been so awesome. And you really, as you were telling your story, you really reminded me of the importance of just the saying of facts tell, stories sell. I'm like, sign me up with Brittany. Like I'm, I'm all in with, with, uh, with going on this journey with her. Um, does anybody have questions? I, I always have questions, but I want you guys to ask and then I'll save mine. Don't be shy. So is that like funny part when you get like six questions at like 3 a.m. You're like, oh, I wish I would have asked that. That always happens to me. <laughs> okay, I'll ask a question while somebody is, I think I have a team of introverts like me. Um, <laughs> So I love that you're saying like this, like lean into the thing that never really changes, which is be proof the products work, invite people, help them get results. Like that's the foundation of this business. Um, what do you, what do you find? This is just my question for right now. What, what are you doing right now to find people, business builders for your team? to find and attract business builders? Are you recruiting them from challenge groups? Are you recruiting them through the way that you speak on social media? Is it a combination? What, what's working well for you? For me personally, I mean, I was the person that signed up day one to become a coach. And I wasn't the person that had to get a transformation first before because I had creeped my coach for two years. So I honestly speak on my social media to the girl who's creeping me that like has me blocked, but isn't there. Like I speak to her because I know she's watching, but she's too scared to talk to. And the biggest thing that I'm doing right now, which is so terrifying in a way, but I know it's going to work, is niching down. And that was the decision that I had to make in the last two weeks is, am I inviting to challenge groups and these transformations or am I inviting to business builders? And when I take a step back and I'm like, what sets my soul on fire the most about this business? It's the business. Like that's like talking to coaches, talking strategy, talking about how we can go and impact somebody's life. Like I, for me personally, it's the business. So that I just heavy hit on that. Um, my social media right now is kind of just like, hey, get to know me. I'm going to inspire you come hang out on my social media kind of thing. I've gotten away from like, hey, I have 10 spots, come join me. Um, because I don't think that works anymore on social media. Um, and I love hanging out on TikTok because TikTok is so raw and real right now. Um, it's kind of like how Instagram was before it became super perfect. And that kind of inspires me to be more authentic and bring it into my, my Instagram where I've built kind of a community and my inviting is honestly behind the scenes in messages and I'm messaging those girls who are watching my story and being like hey like you'd be an awesome coach why haven't you joined me yet and and following up with them I'm um, then going through that I love that I love that confidence in your the simplicity and that invite like you'd be a great coach why haven't you joined yet just it just shows that confidence and it reminds me of the the power of whoever has um, whoever's more certain will influence the other person. And there's just so much certainty that I hear when you just send a message like that over, like, would you be interested in learning about coaching? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, everybody, everybody's yeah. going to say no to that. Like, would you be interested in trying my product? I'm like, no, like, I don't like to me, when I get a message like that, like, Hey, would you be interested in trying this out? I get this like weird 
weird feeling. So I like to think of like, hey, when I'm when someone's messaging me, what do I like to see? Like, I don't like to see a mile long paragraph. I despise when somebody asks about my dog. Like, you, and and maybe for you, like that's your thing. Like, how old your kids? Maybe that works for you. I don't have kids. I don't like talking about kids. And <laughs> but for me, everybody asks me about my dog, and I'm just like, what are you gonna sell me in three messages? Like, I know. So my favorite thing is having kind of that banter together on my social media. And then when we're in those conversations to be like, hey, like, I know you're following me, you know, you're following me, and you know what I do. So why haven't you joined me yet? So I think that's like come out with confidence. And there was a beautiful like, video that came out recently about like shredding the scripts and stuff like that. And they just like talked about like, stop, like share why you're excited about your, like right now I'm going to fill up, like I still do talk about challenge groups, right? I still do invite to the challenge group because there are people who aren't ready. So for the next seven days, my focus is filling up my April group. And a huge part of that is going to be sending people like, hey, like I'm super excited about this. Like the weather in Manitoba, like it's getting better. <laughs> it's not minus 50 anymore. The sun is shining. Like let's get ready to rock and roll here. Um, and that gets people excited. And I still do focus on that part as well, but lead with the coaching. And, and I don't think you really do have to switch between the, or you don't have to strictly do one or the other. Um, my friend, like Marie Barker, she always says you can do both, right? Like, so lead with confidence in both of those conversations that you're having, because you know, they work. I love that. There's some questions that were typed out, but I want to touch on something that you shared. I was thinking back, I've been a coach for 10 years in April. And I was thinking about like when we led a top 10 team, when I was recruiting 20 coaches a month. And I found that over the past two, three years into the, even the start of this year, I'm recruiting three to five coaches. I'm like, okay, what's different from when I was inviting 20, sponsoring 20 coaches a month to now two to three coaches. And the thing that I found out is my social media shifted heavily into like no real niche. It was just like everything, family and, and church and challenge groups and business and everything, hunting and camp, everything. So I'm all over the place. And so I, re I realized like, oh man, when I was doing that, I was like talking about coaching all of all the time I was, I was talking about, I, I would get on my Facebook and do like a live Q and A, like anybody have questions about what I do. And I would do live Q and A is like, I haven't done anything like that forever. So I've really been doing what you're, what you've switched over to as well. Uh, just my niche is like, I help people that are overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, you know, find their passion and build a business doing something they love. So um, I'm excited to see those results shift and then the reminder like I just started like getting like every post is almost about that in some way or form it touches base on it but then I have to remember and you guys have to remember that's I'm not going to see results from that this month it's going to be months months down the road so I want you guys to remember that as you make these shifts in your business you may listen to what Brittany said today and be like I'm all in and realize that it's all in and then stay consistent at that and results will follow so the questions I see here um, that I want to ask, uh, Kelly asked you uh, a couple of questions. How do you build relationships or do you just invite followers? Uh, you kind of touched on that one, uh, but you can retouch on it. Do you feel like you can speak to coaching or uh, speaking to Kelly without making massive income or having huge success? I do make income, just sometimes feels like I'm not diamond or anything. I feel like it's hard to invite to coaching. So what do you say to somebody that's not making that income yet to invite to this incredible opportunity? So I remember hearing, um, like back in the day, we got to like actually post income stuff. Like we could actually post what we made, which is so hilarious and weird that we would just put that on the internet, but we did. Um, and now we can't. And we have to share about how we are creating income. And I remember being on a call with Bonnie Engel and she shared how now with the amount of money that she was making, being like a seven figure earner, it's harder for people to relate to where she is. And as somebody who does not make like an outrageous amount of money in this business, but it is my full-time job, even now I find it hard for people to relate to how I make money and how this is a real business, you know? So 
I think the beautiful thing to lean into is like, hey, guess, well, first off, I signed up because somebody was an Emerald coach, right? Like I signed up because somebody signed up their mom and their dad. Literally, that's why I signed up. And now I'm a five-star two-time elite coach, right? So never, like, nobody knows what Diamond is. Nobody knows what Emerald is. Nobody knows what Two Star is. People are just excited about that recognition, right? Because we don't get that in our normal jobs. But if you're making like enough income to go get your nails done, or you could fill up for gas, or you could pay for groceries, or you got to pay for a bill this month, remember, those are things that you can share. Guess what? Your phone bill might be $50. Your phone bill might be $150 right? And if somebody hears, hey, I could pay for my phone bill, or I could pay for my mortgage, or I could pay for my rent, whether their rent is $500, or their rent or mortgage is $2,000. You just opened the door for that opportunity to let them dream that, oh, yeah, I could use this opportunity to help pay for that, and, and have income to do that. So never disgrace, like, not disgrace, but never, like, Never think that where you are in this business isn't good enough yet. And I know we, we're there. I, I'm there all the time, right? Like I'm in that comparison game. We're all there. You never escape it. Fun fact, it's always here. <laughs> you will always play it. But it's reminding yourself that guess what? What you have right now is more than the person you're watching. And you're smarter. Like as an Emerald coach, as a Diamond coach, you still know more and the potential that this business has than somebody who hasn't signed up yet. So use that as your superpower, right? So yeah. I, I think a beautiful example too is like Kate Schultz, when she was a, like her first year in the business, she was a teacher and she just wanted to make 50 bucks to get her nails done every two weeks, right? So that was her thing. And she grew an entire team of girls who just want to get their nails done. And then they realized, oh, the potential of this. Okay, I got my nails done, now I want to pay a bill. And it grew and compounded just like that. So always lean into that. Yeah, that's exactly how um, my third coach that ever joined my team, Jennifer Greenberg, started wanting to get her nails done. And then it was like, I want to buy a plane ticket to go visit family, which was like a $250 ticket. Uh, but she, you know, and even if it took three months to earn the $250 as a new coach, it's still like something extra. And, and I think there's a lot of power in that. Jim Rohn shares a lot about that, the power of part-time. It's like, I'm a... Like for me, it would have been like, I'm, I work full-time running the service department 12 hours a day, but I'm working on my fortune is how he says it, you know, building this health and fitness business in my spare time at night. And there's a lot of power in that ability. And he talks about when, when he was making enough that it was just obviously he had to leave his full-time job. It got harder because he no longer had that story of like, I work full-time, but this, this is how I'm building my fortune on the side it became his full-time thing. So I definitely see that as well. It's hard. It's hard to relate with people. Um, when, when you get to that level, maybe where Brittany and others might have gone. So lean into where you're at right now. And just remember that every single coach started with $0 in their coaching business. They, they start every elite leader out of the thousands that you've seen in team beach body, however long you've been a coach, Every national wake up call, every guest speaker started making zero money and being not even an Emerald coach. And they were able to invite people to what they were going to build, what that, that goal and that vision was. Like I was attracted to Lindsay Matway's vision. I remember, and I, I like Brittany, I took eight months after being spammed on, on the P90X like page with invites and becoming a Beachbody hater, anti-Beachbody. Um, I was sold on the vision. It wasn't what Lindsay Matway had. I thought she was earning like the six figure income, but she literally was just, um, when we first had our first phone call, when I thought she was like the top coach of the company making a hundred thousand, that phone call with Lindsay was, she was about a coach for three months and she just made the leap to leave bartending and just start building this business. And she wasn't making anything, but it was that confidence and that vision of her just saying, Hey, like I left my job, I'm building this thing and I'm going to slowly pay off the debt from London's premature birth and all that debt we incurred. I'm going to, I'm going to pay it off with this business. So it wasn't like what she had accomplished with the business. It was, I was attracted to the vision and the confidence of where she was going. I was like, that girl knows where she's going. I want to go with her. Does that make sense? So you don't have to have anything uh, to invite. And then remember that power of I love the, when you were, were, were answering that question, Brittany, I was really thinking about like filling up the gas tank 
Like I was, I did a little, I do a man retreat every, with some of my friends every year. And there's this young kid, he's 23. He was a missionary in my neighborhood. And then he went back home and then he moved back for school. And now he's kind of in the area. So I invite him to come hang out with us. And like, we, we, we did a, if you have the ability, can you help with um, plowing the, the cabin out? It's like 50 bucks. We're going to go there for four nights, like 50 bucks to spend four nights with some guys at a cabin is ridiculously inexpensive, but he's a college student. So we're driving. He's like, Hey man, can I have a couple months to get that 50 bucks to you? And I was like, dude, like I said, if you have the ability in that chat thread specifically for you, because I know you're in college and the rest of us are like 40 years old and have been in our jobs for like 20 years. And it just reminded me when I was having that conversation on the drive with him that 50 bucks can mean a lot to like a college student, a newlywed that's struggling with their first born or whatever it might be. So remember that when you're inviting as well, it's those small wins too are what they're going to believe your audience is going to believe to be achievable over like come make six figures like sharing your results on social media <laughs> this doesn't seem real to your audience okay um one more question and then we will Absolutely. let you oh do you want to touch on that and then you can answer that question from adrian no oh, i was just gonna say like that's like so true it's just like the vision of where you're going and having confidence in that like yeah you might have not achieve that big goal or that big vision that you're going after I mean at the start I just yeah I wanted to pay for my products and then it was like okay I want to put some money on my credit card and then I was like okay I want to quit my job and I'm like okay I've done that and now I'm like I'm gonna work my butt off because there's like a lot on the water in the town we live in that like we want to buy in the next like three to five years and like that motivates me so much to work towards that and sharing that vision with people like hey I'm not there yet but like dang when I'm having like my morning cup of coffee and I'm gonna be sitting there people are gonna be like wow I remember when she talked about that and it allows people to dream with you like oh I can do this on the side and whatever their dream is allow them to cast their vision out and that's something that you can do for your teams too is share with like your newer coaches like hey what what's that dream that you want to to create as you're moving forward and I think that's something that's really beautiful and even Emily Faber, I remember this was before she hit 15 star and she was like, I'm going to buy my husband a Tesla. And everyone like literally was kind of like laughing at her. They're like, okay, like good luck with that girl. And it was like within three to four months, like she put like pedal to the metal, went after it. And like now they have a Tesla and it's hilarious because when COVID hit, I remember she did like an Insta story where they had like a fireplace dinner. They had like Chick-fil-A in their Tesla watching like the campfire on the big screen in the Tesla. Like it was hilarious, but I remember she casted that vision out and now we get to see that. And I think that's the beautiful thing with coaching is use this as an opportunity and a vehicle to get you to where you want to go and where you've always wanted to be. Um, So with my inviting, how I structure my inviting is exactly how I want to be invited. Um, A lot of my invites come straight from my stories. So I don't invite anybody, like I don't go to my followers and then just like start picking out names. I'm looking at the people who follow me and that are watching my stories because if they're already following me, okay, they like me and now if they watch my stories, they're invested and they know exactly what I'm serving up. So I will be sharing on my stories like later today and for like the next few weeks or the next few days um, about like my next, my April challenge group, right? So I'm going to say like, hey, Sarah, like make it a little personalized, but honestly, it'll be like, hey, Sarah, I don't know if you saw on my stories, but I opened up five spots to my challenge, my April challenge group. Um, you were on my mind and I'd love for you to snag a spot kind of thing, like something along the lines of that. But I say, I don't know if you saw my stories when I'm literally directly inviting them from my story. So I know she saw it and I know she's watching it. And if not, she's going to go back and watch my stories. And then we're going to have the conversation. But yeah, I'm not very much like the Hey Girl, but I get very like the feel felt found, like I'm really excited And I'm committing to this because like the winter blues, like, I'm not sure what it is where you guys are, but 
in Manitoba here, we have been into like the single house lockdown since October. So like we haven't seen anybody, we can't go to the grocery store together. Like they finally just started opening up restaurants to 25%. Like we can't see anybody. We've been super isolated. Um, and it's been really hard. Plus with like February, it's literally minus 50 here for two weeks. Um, so we just like stayed in our house and was going kind of crazy. So my <laughs> huge invite is like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this warm weather to come. I'm excited to kick this February and March blues out the door, dive back into my health, taking care of myself so I can feel good um, as we head into the summer months. I have five spots available. Are you ready to join me? Something like that, right? So have that what you are excited about, what kind of you're promising with like your challenge group, like, hey, like we can get results in the next 30 days. Guess what? If you don't get them, get your money back. And when they're like, oh, you're so confident that you're going to give me my money back that I'll get results, like deal, I'm all in. And I think that's something that we don't utilize a lot um, either. So yeah, that would be kind of what I do. It's not like the classic hey girl, because as soon as I see one of those come in from like legging companies right now, like I run for the hills and I'm like, ah. Oh girl don't do that <laughs> I'm the same way when I get messages about things like that um mm -hmm. okay, we're, we're gonna let you go but Brittany I would like to ask you how a couple, a couple things just for you to close out how has Beachbody changed your life because you say it saved your life in the topic and what would you say to somebody that is um ready to take it to the next level it's been been here for a minute ready to ready to level up oh <laughs> like that's like a crazy question when you, they like you hear that on the national wake-up calls and stuff like that like how has this changed your life you're like oh like it can't be that that big of a deal but like the relationship that I've healed and created with myself would never have been possible and the resources that I have now through personal development incredible relationships with my friends um and now like the resources to go to therapy have the confidence to go to therapy and and be able to deal with anxiety depression and how I was able to overcome like suicidal thoughts and heal my heart quit the job that sucked the life out of me and now in a pandemic met the love of my life we ended up moving in together and being able to be in like a healthy beautiful relationship would never have happened if I wouldn't have been a coach and I think when I look at all aspects of my life mental health physical emotional spiritual everything has come from coaching and to the coach who's like oh, I've just been stuck in this spot I've been stuck here and I, I want to be that 15 star diamond or I want to make that six figures or I'm ready to be an elite coach you have to get so clear on that vision of what that feels like and then read that vision every single day like every single day you have to read that vision and no longer drag people that you know have no potential to be there and I know that's harsh but we drag so many people who don't have that vision that we have so go find the people who want to build with you and share your vision unapologetically and I know you've said that you've checked off the boxes and stuff like that, but stop checking off the boxes on your business activity tracker. Know that sending out that one invite could completely change somebody's life or that coach invite you're going to send, like she might be the next top coach. Like that might be the next Moira Kusaba. That might be the next Lucy. That might be the next Sam that like you've been waiting for that runner. So like draw your line in the sand, get laser focused on where you want to go and how much that means to you and do everything in your power to be reminded by that every single day. I love it. Thank you so much, Brittany. I'm not going to say anything on top of that because that was perfect. Uh, we're so grateful that you spent your time with us and I'm grateful for everybody that was on here live. If you feel, if you feel like this message will uh, help one of your coaches that wasn't able to make it live, make sure you send them the recording uh, so they can take partake of some of this awesomeness as well. Uh, I'm grateful for you guys, grateful for this team. Once again, grateful, Brittany, that you spent some time with us today. And uh, let's go out and have an awesome rest of the week. And remember that our mission is super important. We have the ability to help 
save lives, help people, you know, find something that can completely change and turn around, not just their life, but their family and their friends as well. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Thank you guys. Yeah.